Hi everyone, today we will talk about how one can become a data architect. This is going to be a very crisp video which would focus on just two things because that's all you need to know. First, career pathways required and second, data subject areas that one needs to master. This video will not talk about role requirements, soft skill requirements or how much does a data architect earn. So let's get started right away. Let's discuss the first thing that you need to know, which is possible career pathways. Please note that these are typical pathways that enable becoming a data architect and doesn't mean that someone not in these roles cannot become a data architect. In fact, anyone who knows data subject areas discussed in the next section can become a data architect irrespective of the current role. So if your role isn't listed in this section, don't get disheartened. Next section will shed some light on exactly what you need to master on in order to become a data architect. On the other hand, it also doesn't mean that data architect is the only career option for these roles. There are various options available. So a most likely career path starts with a data engineer followed by a senior data engineer. This may or may not encompass big data. When we talk about data architect, there are various focus areas like data warehouse, big data, etc. But the foundation being talked about here is data engineering. Now a software engineer expert in Java, Python or any object oriented programming language can also become a data architect by either first becoming a data engineer if junior or senior data engineer if the person has been uh, in multiple years in the software engineering job family. A senior software engineer can also become a data architect if his or her focus area has been data. Another typical pathway is that of a database developer who specializes in writing SQL and PL SQL scripts. They typically become a senior database developer and then a data architect. Likewise, an ETL developer can also follow the same trajectory. Another trajectory typically followed is in the subject area of business intelligence. A BI developer or an analyst can become a senior BI developer or BI architect, enabling themselves to become a data architect. Another path is that of a database administrator who can become a senior DBA. No one knows fundamental concepts of database as good as a DBA. If you are into quality engineering with focus on database or automation, or if you are a software development engineer in test, also known as SDET, you can move into one of these roles mentioned earlier and follow the typical pathways. While so far we have discussed only technology focused roles, now let's move our attention to some roles that are a mix of technology and business. Yes, someone having good business acumen like a business analyst can fit even well into a data architect role. As a matter of fact, back in the days when there wasn't a well-defined data architect role, Business analysts were actually the ones performing key data architecture activities like data modeling, designing, etc. So here, a career pathway can begin with either a data analyst or a software engineer or a data engineer. Software and data engineers with inclination towards business typically move into the roles that we'll discuss next. These roles are business analyst, data modeler and data scientist. Organizations often have a dedicated data modeler or senior data modeler role. And as the name suggests, they focus on data modeling aspects alone. Hence, with grabbing additional subject areas, they are well suited to become a data architect. Data scientists may seem a little bit out of place here, but the next logical step and growth for them would be either a AI architect or a data architect, which will keep them closer to the fundamentals. Now, let's understand the years of experience requirements. The first horizontal section that you see is typically those who are starting their careers and is typically zero to three years with some roles stretching up to five. Next section is usually within three to eight years experience band with some roles stretching up to 10. Now these are typical scenarios for those who are focusing to become a data architect and not any other target role. For example, those continuing in business analyst career path would become a principal business analyst around 12 to 15 year experience band, which is not shown here. So finally, a typical experience band of a data architect would start from eight years. If 
one is able to master required subject areas early in his or her career and it typically stays until 15 years of experience usually data architects would then choose to become a solution architect or an enterprise data architect or simply an enterprise architect if they have grasped other architecture areas as well during their tenure Moving on to the next section, what all data subject areas one needs to master in order to become a data architect. All right, we will split what's required into must have, which is absolutely essential if you would like to be called a data architect. Should have, which are specific data subject areas, at least two of these needs to be mastered along with uh, must haves to find your niche as a data architect. And finally, could have. These are upcoming desired areas which might give you a competitive edge in future, if not now. So what are the must haves? Well, database concepts to start with. These are concepts like indexing, partitioning, etc. Next, design patterns and principles. I have summarized 10 ETL design patterns in an exclusive video. Do check it out later. Architecture and design patterns are bread and butter of any architect. And the final must have is data modeling. Even if data architect isn't going to perform data modeling, this skill is must to become one. So with these three skills, you can certainly become a data architect if the requirement is to design an OLTP system or an ODS. But these requirements are very less these days. So even though you qualify to become a data architect with these skills, you would certainly need to keep pace with the changing world and upskill to stay relevant. That brings us to the should haves which are specific data subject areas which one can choose to master on. I will be highlighting five of them, but you can choose and grow your career in two of them with the knowledge of third. No one would expect you to be expert in all five. So these areas are data warehousing, ETL, data governance, analytics and business intelligence. Traditionally, it has always been data warehouse and ETL for data architect, but since uh, then a lot of things have actually evolved and data governance is becoming very important. In fact, I won't be surprised at all if it be becomes a must have uh, for a data architect in two years time from recording this video. So knowledge of data governance is desired. Fourth area is analytics, which has recently moved from could have to should have with the evolution of data world. And finally, business intelligence architect is also a traditional one but is losing its importance a bit with analytics and data visualization coming into picture and finally let's discuss out our could haves uh, which are big data engineering and cloud engineering uh, you can definitely become a well-paid data architect without knowing uh, these as many organizations continue to live in the legacy world but in few years these area would be very much important as a result Having a knowledge or experience in these areas can improve your chances of getting your CV shortlisted or of uh, cracking the interview. Organizations would not like to hire again in coming years people with these skills if you already are bringing these skills to the organization. This is because sooner or later migration to big data and cloud has to happen. Please note that this video was focused on data architect and not big data architect role. So that's all we have for today. If you would like to see more such videos on different roles, then do let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, then do check out our other videos. Do like and share. Also subscribe the channel for latest videos and trends in the world of architecture. See you in the next video.